So a cataract is a disease of the lens. Correct. And Correct. it's a natural, I guess this is kind of a, a gray area. Do we consider this to be a natural product of aging, the way our skin wrinkles and the elasticity changes, or is it considered a pathology in the way that type two diabetes is a pathology, not necessarily a normal consequence of aging that can be avoided? Yeah, that's a that's a really good uh, and, and, and interesting way to look at it. So I think that cataract formation is a universal component of, uh, you know, DOE days on earth, you know, just mm -hmm. the, I, I don't recall seeing many people in their seventies without some degree of cataract formation. It starts to become universal. Um, however, there are things that can pathologically prematurely cause cataract formation. Some of them are sort of surprising, like being electrocuted can actually cause premature cataract formation, but that's one uh, sort of exotic, weird one. But trauma, head trauma can certainly do it. Just head trauma, not necessarily eye trauma. Just well, it, you know, the head I mean, is obviously they go kinda, hand in hand, yeah. Typically the, the eye is in the head, and if the head receives trauma, there's going to be a certain amount of trauma in the eye itself, so. Right, but point is, it doesn't have to be direct trauma to the correct. eye, simply, the the coup counter coup That's forces exactly right. of the brain are presumably also being reverberated through the vitreous fluid. That's exactly right. So if you think about you know the eye as a fluid containing organ, and when it receives trauma, and just as you mentioned with coup and contra coup injuries of the brain inside the skull, I think those same forces come to bear on the eye itself. So. I think it's more common when you do have direct eye trauma, but I think even head trauma alone can predispose someone to cataract formation. Um, certainly diabetes is a, is a cause of premature cataract formation. Steroid use, corticosteroid use can lead to cataract formation. So is the lens a vascular structure? No, it is not. And the protein, if you think about the lens, it's kind of the shape and about the size of an M&M candy, just like a plain- The plain, chocolate ones. Yeah, the chocolate the ones, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, just the ones without the nuts or yeah. pretzels or whatever they're putting inside M&Ms now. But the, the, you know, a plain M&M candy. Yep. And it's got a coating kind of like the candy shell. And the protein inside the chocolate is optically clear when you are a kid. And that protein does not turn over or exchange, but the membrane, the can, candy coating, the so-called lens capsule can allow molecules to diffuse in and out. So a classic example of this is someone will point out, hey, you know, uh, my vision, my glasses prescription suddenly changed. It, I became much more nearsighted or I became much more farsighted in the space of a month. And I, I went to the eye doctor and they said, wow, your glasses are totally wrong. And the first thing I think of is go get your blood sugar checked because glucose <clears throat> can diffuse into the lens, cause it to swell. And that will change the shape of the lens. The lens becomes physically bigger. Sure. So it's like a thicker, more powerful lens. So it's an osmotic change correct basically and the the time frame for that to happen is over a period of several weeks so if the blood sugar goes up it may there may be a lag of a month or two before the vision changes and when the blood sugar goes down same thing it takes weeks for that to kind of go back to normal this podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about 
where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. 